It's me, Mikey Pipes. Good morning. Today is Friday, the best day, October 22nd, 2021. It is a little before 8 a.m. I am heading to my first service call of the day. Got a bunch of tune-ups scheduled today. My first service call, the client I've serviced for several years, and uh, we're going there for a boiler tune-up on an old, old federal gas-fired hydronic boiler with two uh, zones. And over the past couple years, we've been noticing that the carbon monoxide levels have been climbing. And she's been warned that the day will be coming. So I hope they're still kind of borderline safe-ish, but we'll see. All right. And if you'd like any stickers, Mikey Pipes, if you ain't testing your guessing, if you're doing boiler tune-ups and you don't got a combustion analyzer, you shouldn't be doing boiler tune-ups. If you would like any stickers, details in the description box down below. All right, let's get going. Here doing a annual tune-up of this old federal boiler. You can see the old Lilco service history dates from early mid 70s, 1970s. I don't know why this was placed there. It's not wise. This is stupid. One of us must have did this. Put a sticker over that. That's not cool. But we were here last year and did a combustion test. And the particles per million of, parts per million, sorry, of carbon monoxide was 978. Just barely could read that, but now we're at over 3,000. I stopped it because at 4,000, it's going to go into sensor protection. So, obviously the situation is getting worse here. Fairly easy for a swap out though. Two zones. The zone valve for the second floor. And here's zone valve for the ground floor. This is our Aquastat relay. Old federal boiler. Let's see how many BTUs this is. We get the little flashlight out. 125 gross input with a net of 180 percenter. This would be our line voltage coming in. Thermostat, so it'd be easy to rip all this out and can find space here. I'll probably go with a Well McLean CGA4. Easy. But this bad boy is quite heavy. Quite, quite heavy. All right, let's see if we can give her the news. Hi. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, yes. when we did a tune-up, yeah. the we saw some elevated readings of, and again, I'm just I'll give you information. I don't want to. Yeah. My intent is not to scare you right. or okay. put the fear of God into you. Right. Um, but the boiler is running very unsafely at the end yeah. of the day. Um, I'll show you some numbers here, which will make no sense to the, the layperson, but the biggest concern is the amount of carbon monoxide being produced by the boiler. Yeah. Um, for, a, for a comparison, most boilers of, of your type produce very little amounts of carbon monoxide, yeah. sometimes even nothing, because it's yeah. perfectly burning. Um, generally speaking, industry standard, if when we're testing, we like to see a number under 50. And what is this, 250? No, it's almost 3,000. Oh, my God. Yeah. Two years ago, it was almost 1,000. Oh, so it's getting higher. Last higher. year, it was 1,800. Yes. And this year, I stopped it at almost 3,000 because at 3,000, it goes into sensor protection. Oh. It's as old as the house. It's dated from the mid-70s. Right. And again, I'm not telling you you need to change it, but you need to be made aware that it's not safe to run. Seriously. Yeah. 
and mm -hmm. I don't know what your in future intentions are, yeah. but you really, if you were my own mother, I would change it out. Yeah. No, I, I have no intentions of moving. Ever. That was the first day. Oh, hello. Are you moving? Are you moving to North Shore Tower? <laughs> my sister-in-law moved this to them. They will think I'm running away, so I'm not going anywhere. You don't want to go to North Shore Towers. <laughs> no, although there are a lot of younger people moving in now, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, my huh. sister in was there about, it'll be three years, I think. Well, no, maybe two and a half years now. She says, yeah, there's younger people. You know, they have a school bus that comes every day to pick up the kids. No, wow. not moving. Huh. Not moving. It's a nice neighborhood, and your family's nearby, the kids. Oh, yeah, I have everyone right Exactly. Here. It's, it's like, well, I slept there and slept back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it. Right. Um, but if your intentions are to stay, yeah. um, the sooner you do it, the better The better off you are. Yeah. So a few questions. Carbon monoxide detectors. I have one upstairs. Right How upstairs. old is it? It's the kind you plug into the wall. Okay. How old? I don't know. We've had it for a while. Okay. The the typical life expectancy of them is around three years. No, it's if if it's more than three years, you need to get one a new one for upstairs and yes. one for down here as well. Okay. Um, because unlike newer systems that have safety sensors built in, it God forbid, like something should happen to the chimney. Yeah. Again, not trying to put the fear of God into you. If something should happen to the chimney, um, yeah. or you have what we call a positive draft, which means that the exhaust gases are not going up the chimney, they're coming into the, the garage or the, or the closet behind the garage, and then, which will be into uh -huh. your house. Yeah. Um, that's a concern because you, you'd, it could be fatal, seriously. So the boiler runs, it heats, yes. but it's just unsafe to operate. Yeah. How much is this? Is not cheap. Yeah, how many thousands? <laughs> Probably. Ah! You ain't gonna know. I have to put a new, what is it called? The furnace? Boiler. Boiler. It's not called the furnace. No, a furnace, uh, just for, What's for a furnace, right? a furnace yeah. heats air with flame. A yeah. boiler heats water with flame. Make sense? Yeah, no. okay. Okay, so uh, some people have a furnace in their house, which is attached to ductwork, and you have vents that blow out air throughout the house. Similar to air conditioning, but minus the heating component. Make yeah. sense? So you have this, you, so you know, you can have a gas furnace that ignites the, the gas and flames go into these tubes and air goes across the tubes and hence hot air comes out of vents. That's a furnace. Furnace heats air, a boiler heats water. So this is a boiler. A boiler. Yes. Oh, it heats. Oh, because it's a hot water system. Okay, correct, because you have baseboard or radius right. throughout the house yeah. and you have two thermostats. And we yeah. turn the thermostat on, the boiler comes on, it heats the, the water that's contained within it, and yeah. then it circulates with pumps throughout the house to that zone. Right. And, and when the thermostat is satisfied, it turns off, and the boiler turns off. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll think about it. Yes, for a few you days. should. <laughs> Let me continue testing everything else. Yeah, okay. At least we got negative pressure on the draft measurement. She's not really prepared to replace it right now, um, but I don't feel safe with this running like that. So I'm gonna put in a spill switch here and wire it into the end switch off of the thermostat, uh, off of the zone valves. That way, if this goes out, it's gonna prevent, prevent the boiler from running. And again, it's just, it gives me more peace of mind and I'll show you how I do that. There's the spill switch right there, resettable. Take a little bit of wire.
they give you this little insulator. All right, let's put that in there. And let's get that on there. Okay, there's one. Wire strippers by Nipix. Just put it out like that. Voila. Okay, this is by Klein. Awesome tool, guys. And now, let's get the other one on there. Come on. Now, both leads are wired. I'm gonna mount this to the diverter. All right, here's that spill switch, and I wired it to break TT coming off the end switch, off the, boy, off the uh, zone valves. So this green wire, I just cut it. This green wire was one of two wires, the green and the blue, which then get wired to TT on the Aquastat relay. So in the event that this should ever trip, see, turns the boiler off. And now I'm much more confident that there will be no, no fatalities here, God forbid. All right. Second Can I four? see one? Yeah. Wow. Look at this. World War II. Where does it say World War II? Well, it can't be World War One. No, no, no. But the I war ration know. book. Because there's one for his brother and for him. He was born wow. 1939. And, and you would use these little 41. coupons, these stickers. Yeah. Did you to get it? food. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow, well, this is like, this is priceless history, by the way. That's why I have to look through everything. That is priceless thing. history. I can't believe Amazing. That. I just found it this minute. I'm looking through a box. <laughs> um, I, I added that switch that we spoke about to the uh, the vent piping of the boiler. Yeah, okay. Um, and I wired it in the yeah. in a fashion where, God forbid, it should ever come, you know, the ex exhaust gases should ever come into the house, um, the boiler's not going to turn on. The circulators okay. will still run. What if and the boiler is on? Would it shut it off? If the boiler is on, running, yeah. and the exhaust gases don't go up the chimney and they come they come out of that that what we call a diverter yes. it's going to prevent it's going to turn off the boiler immediately yeah killing the flame okay what will still occur though is the circulator will still run okay because uh, will it actually no it won't it'll turn off the boiler okay because you have a, a pump we call it circulator. Yes. That had that's controlled by two valves, electronic valves. One for the first floor, one for the second floor. Yeah. And that is located inside the machine, inside the boiler, which gets its signal from the thermostats and the zone valves to turn on. But it tur it'll turn everything off. I would like to have kept okay. the circulators running, and yeah. it would that wouldn't have been an, you know because if it's cold out, you know, and it's below it's thirty degrees, it's going to freeze. But okay. I rather I rather you free freeze than than copy for something else, such a, right. something much worse. But I added it, I tested it, it works. So in the event you turn on the heat one day right. or you come home and it's cool and yeah. you go downstairs oh. and you see the boiler's not running, you know what happened and you're alive. Seriously. All right, let's go over the invoice and how I worded this to document, you know, the service call and what we did to probably save their lives. So let me show you the mobile dispatching and invoicing app that we use called ServicePal. There'll be a link down in the description box down below. Let's review. All right, let's quickly go over the ServicePal invoice. I have a diagnosis, performed annual heating tune-up and inspection. Boiler is dated with a service history mid-1970s. Combustion analysis recorded extremely high levels of CO, which has been doubling during the past two years. Discussed with client, system is unsafe and needs replacement. It is, it's facts. 
Unlike newer systems, this boiler lacks a safety switch to shut down the boiler in the event of positive pressure. I also should have added, uh, you know, spilling out of the diverter for case of a blocked chimney. Uh, added a blocked vent switch, spill switch to the diverter, wired to system to break TT going to Aquastat. And I quoted a new Well McLean CGA4 gas fired boiler, two zones with Taco ECM circulators, all inclusive price of X. And the model and type of boiler it is, my labor breakdowns, parts breakdown, and on page a picture two. of the combustion analysis. All right. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, that you learned something from it. And again, I added a small little insurance policy for all parties involved by adding that spill switch on the draft.